Hello everyone, it's Sam aka Ocean Unknown and welcome back to my channel. This video is the sixth episode of my series of analyzing characters through the theatrical lens and this is the long-awaited one that everyone has been waiting for. So I'm not going to waste any more of your time, let's get into it. But before we fully dive in, I just wanted to say that I really try to be as unbiased as possible in this video. The character I'm covering is a very polarizing character in this franchise and I don't want my emotions or opinions to get in the way of the information, lore, and analysis. I've already made an Ever After High video essay, so I'll make this brief to not be redundant. Ever After High is a doll line owned by Mattel that started in 2013 and was canceled in 2016. While Ever After High is primarily a doll line, there was also an animated series along with multiple books. The story revolves around the children of fairy tale characters going to school at Ever After High to study and fulfill the role of their parents' stories. The characters fall into one of two categories royals, who think that everyone should carry out the destiny of their fairy tale ancestors, and rebels, who think that everyone should be able to choose if they want to have their planned destiny or not. This episode is about the leader of the royals, the daughter of Snow White, Apple White. said in the intro, Apple White, who in the animated series is voiced by John Cole Good, is the daughter of Snow White and is the leader of the royals at Ever After High. While Raven is more of a main character in my personal opinion and how the animated show's story plays out, Apple is often advertised as a co-main character with Raven. She is 15 years old, like most of the characters in Ever After High, and is going into her sophomore year of high school. She strongly believes in destiny and follows tradition to become the next Snow White and Queen of Ever After. To kind of explain the world slash multiverse of Ever After High, there's different kingdoms or realms, and these include Ever After, which is the realm Ever After High is in, Wonderland, which is where all the Wonderland characters are from, Nottingham, the realm with the Robin Hood story, the land of the giants, the Sea Kingdom, Gingerbread Land, Neverland, and Mount Olympus, which is one of the locations that connects Ever After High and Monster High because of C.A. Cupid. As the next Snow White, Apple is destined to rule over the realm and kingdom of Ever After as a whole. Throughout the story, Apple tries to uphold the rules of Ever After High, especially when her roommate, Raven Queen, begins to question the rules of the school. Just like in my other videos in this series, I will now go over a couple episodes of the animated show, including the specials, to discuss more of Apple's personality and some of her story throughout Ever After High. I will not cover every single episode Apple is in. For reference, Apple is in 55 episodes, including the six specials. The episodes I will be covering are the Keystone episodes and the episodes that add to Apple's story and character development. Gather round, friends, and let us tell you a story. The first chapter of Ever After High starts with Apple White's introduction episode, Apple's Tale, The Story of a Royal. Apple White walks to class on the first day of the new year at Ever After High, with birds holding her luggage as she walks with her best friend forever after, Briar Beauty, daughter of Sleeping Beauty. Her and Briar are talking about the upcoming Legacy Day, where they will pledge to follow the destinies of their ancestors. Briar starts talking about how excited she is for the after parties, but Apple interrupts her to talk about how important Legacy Day is. She mentions how she's going to be the future queen of Ever After, and how she can't have any embarrassing photos of her on social media that could potentially haunt her as a queen. Briar assures her that no one would ever think poorly of her. As they walk up the steps, the students swoon over her beauty and presence, some offering to carry her books for her. After Briar heads off to talk to more people, Apple goes over to Daring Charming, her assumed soulmate by destiny. Blondie Locks, daughter of Goldilocks and the school's main reporter, asks Apple to talk to her viewers about her relationship with Daring, in which she says that her and Daring are not a couple, and says that her and Daring have all of Ever After to be together. Bonnie tells them that they are the perfect couple as Apple and Daring go get lunch. A few hours later, Apple decorates her soon-to-be roommate Raven's side of the dorm with traditionally evil decorations. Briar asks why she is doing this for Raven, and Apple says, because she's such an important part of my story. When she poisons me, it changes everything. Then the prince can wake me, and I become queen. That's when I get my happily ever after. I need her. Raven knocks on the door and Apple tells Briar to hide because in her exact words, she doesn't want Raven to know that Briar helped her. Raven enters to see that Apple is her roommate, which she's quite confused about. Later, Apple and Briar go out into town to see their friend Ash and Ella, daughter of Cinderella, and then they go back to school for their Legacy Day rehearsal. Apple exclaims how excited she is for people to see her as the queen she will become. At Legacy Day rehearsal, Apple is ecstatic to go first, as Milton Grimm, the headmaster of the school, calls her his future queen. She steps up to the podium and gives her proclamation and Milton tells her she did perfect and Apple White replies 
lies. I know. When Raven asks what will happen if she doesn't take the pledge, Apple's jaw is on the floor. She says, but she has to do it. If she never poisons me, then I'll never fall asleep. And I'll never get kissed by my prince. And I'll never become queen. And I'll never have my happily ever after. As Raven runs off, Apple runs off and cries in the enchanted forest. Milton finds her there and he tells her to keep an eye on Raven, as following the stories is the only way to keep their world safe. He asks Apple to convince Raven to follow her story of being the evil queen. Before Apple can answer, he disappears, leaving Apple there to contemplate what to do. Next is Raven's introduction episode, Raven's Tale, The Story of a Rebel, which shows Raven's side of the story of the same day as Apple's tale. As I mentioned in my first Ever After High video essay, the scene where Raven and Maddie enter Ever After High mirrors the scene from the last episode of Apple and Briar entering the school. However, unlike Apple who was met with admiration, Raven is met with fear. Later on, Apple enters the castle Tyria with Daring for an onlook of adoring students. Her and Daring walk up to Raven and Daring's brother Dexter as the bell rings. Apple heads off to her good kingdom management class as Raven heads off to history of evil spells, which Apple says is so perfect for her in a quite condescending manner. Hours later, Apple welcomes Raven to their dorm room, which Raven is confused by as she wanted to room with Maddie. Apple says, since you're such an important part of my story, you poison me, I fall asleep. So I asked Headmaster Grimm if we could live together and he said yes. Isn't that enchanting? She goes on to talk about how great of a roommate she is, saying that she's thoughtful and beautiful and sings songs to woodland creatures. She also shows Raven the stereotypically evil decoration she put in Raven's space in the dorm. At the Legacy Day rehearsal, the same events happen with just an extra frame of Apple looking off anxiously. In Stark Raven Mad, Apple is a part of Raven's intervention run by the faculty where she says that Raven should be evil and not be nice to her and others. In the next episode, True Reflections, Apple ignores a boundary set by Raven and continues singing to her magic mirror. Raven accidentally casts a spell on the mirror which makes it say mean things to Apple. When Raven ultimately confesses to her mistake, Apple says she knew what happened because Raven is supposed to be evil so she assumes she did it on purpose. She then makes Raven pretend to be the talking mirror and forces her to give compliments. In Maddie and Chief, a piece of lore is established which is that Apple is the current student council president. In this episode, Apple is the only one running for election until Maddie decides to run against her. This episode also shows a lot of Apple's motivations, especially especially for a borderline filler episode. During the debate, Apple says that she will run the student council like it is her future kingdom in a perfect manner, which shows that she already has her sights set on her prescribed throne, and she is also a perfectionist. After the royals and rebels cause a fight in the audience, Maddie decides that the best thing to do is compromise and have her and Apple be co-student council presidents. The next important episode to Apple's storyline is the first Keystone episode since the premiere, The Tale of Legacy Day. Apple tries to talk to Raven, but Raven and Maddie run off. Blondie asks Apple why she's chasing after Raven, in which she says, I have to convince Raven to sign the book. My destiny depends on it. But before she can catch up to Raven and Maddie, they are transported into the library's basement to talk to Giles Grimm, the other Grimm brother, about what will happen if you don't sign the storybook of legends. Then, Legacy Day is upon the students of Ever After High. Milton introduces Apple as she graces the stage with birds on her shoulders. The key appears before her as she looks at her destiny. She gets poisoned, becomes famous, has sold out shows? Uh? and sees herself as the queen of ever after in the mirror. She signs her name in the storybook of legends as she steps to the side. Raven steps up and Apple pressures her to sign the book. After Raven refuses to sign the book, Apple exclaims, How could you be so, so selfish? Raven tries to explain that everyone can choose their own destiny as now it's proven that not signing the book doesn't cause immediate death. But Apple says she doesn't want a new destiny, which isn't what she said. A free choice doesn't automatically equal a brand new destiny or story. There's still ways she can become queen just without the part where Raven poisons her. Raven says that her happy ending could still happen and Apple runs off crying. The first chapter two episode that is important to Apple's story is the special True Hearts Day. Apple is first seen in the special walking to Ashland's shoe store, The Glass Slipper, thinking about True Hearts Day as C.A. Cupid is planning a secret True Hearts Day dance for the school. Apple talks about the power of love and specifically says, finding our predetermined princes. However, Ashland is in love with Hunter Huntsman, the son of the Huntsman from Snow White and a rebel. Apple assures her that she can tell her anything because they're BFFs. Ashland upfront tells her she doesn't think she'd understand and before Apple presses her on more on the topic, Ashland 
Ashton heads off. The next day, Ashton and Hunter come forward announcing their relationship so Duchess Swan, the daughter of Odette from Swan Lake, doesn't blackmail them. When Apple finds out about the relationship, she says, Ashlyn, you you and Hunter are dating? But but you're a royal and he's a rebel. As Raven is interviewed about Ashlyn and Hunter's relationship from her dorm room, Apple is seen crying on her bed, kicking her feet and pounding the mattress. When it's Apple's time to be interviewed, she says she's worried about Ashlyn and Hunter, saying that if they don't follow their destinies, their books could close forever. In class, Ashlyn confronts Apple and she says, this is hard for me, which is a first because I usually handle everything so very well. She then tries to turn it into a trust issue, saying that Ashlyn should have trusted her enough to tell her. Ashlyn tells her that she didn't think she'd understand, and Apple admits that she doesn't understand, and pulls the, I don't want anything bad to happen to you card yet again. Then, Ashlyn breaks up with Hunter because of what Apple said. At the True Hearts they dance, Ashlyn has a change of heart, pun intended, and confesses her love to Hunter. Ashlyn declares that she is now a rebel, and she gives a heart blossom to Hunter. She sees Apple approaching her, and she apologizes to her. Apple gives Ashlyn a heart blossom, I'm saying, I might be worried about you, and I might think you're doing the wrong thing, but I want you to know that we'll always be friends, no matter what. That's what's in my true heart. They make up, and Ashton and Hunter get back together. Back to serialized episodes. In Class Confusion, Apple tells Raven that she can't take the Princessology class at Ever After High, despite the fact that Raven is technically a princess. Apple tries to spite her by taking home evil Nomics, but she keeps failing to make an animal evil. She skates by the first project, but Raven tells her that she dropped out of Princessology because the amount of smiling practice made her cheeks hurt. Which honestly, good on Raven for setting a boundary and knowing when to stop. Which is something that actually comes into play a lot between Apple and Raven's characters much later. In Apple's Birthday Bake Off, it's Apple's birthday, May 13th, which fun fact is the same as Robert Pattinson's birthday. This is the skin of a killer bone. Also fun fact, May 13th is also the birthday of singer and violinist Alexander Rybach, who oddly enough has a song very connected with Ever After High. I'm in love with a fairy tale. Anyways, there's more lore to the favoritism the school gives to Apple as on her birthday, the school has a cake baking competition. Also, the school just has a lot of favoritism towards the royals as the rebels weren't allowed in the baking contest until this year. I feel like I need a list of the absurd rules of Ever After High, like how Key and Carlisle had his list of the wizard rules in his Wizards of Waverly Place retrospective, but instead of funny things like Shakira isn't real, it's just flat out excluding students who have really done anything wrong as far as we've seen. Keep in mind this rule was set before everything that happened on Legacy Day and it isn't based on children of villains. Raven specifically said rebels, not villains. Apple wants Raven to poison her cake, but Raven calls her out for forgetting about Legacy Day and her desire to write her own destiny. Apple is astonished that her friend doesn't want to poison her. Uh -huh. So Briar tempers with Raven's cake so it'll appear like Raven tried to poison her. Blondie eats Raven's cake, turns into a phoenix, and Apple is ecstatic thinking Raven tried to poison her. Briar isn't that good at keeping secrets so she spills the beans right after and turns herself into a turtle. In The Beautiful Truth, we get more insight into Apple's lore as she realizes that beauty isn't always what's on the outside, it can be skin deep as well. She looks through a photo album of her winning beauty pageants as she admits to Cedar Wood, the daughter of Pinocchio, that she was right about how beauty pageants don't show the beauty inside of the many strong powerful young ladies of Ever After High. Apple proposes to reinvent the contest and says that true beauty is living your life the best you can and that everyone is special. This episode is where Apple's character development first starts to appear, and yes, that includes True Heart's Day, as in my personal opinion, what she said to Ashlyn was not an apology, and more of her fear of losing Ashlyn as a friend, as she literally said she still thought Ashlyn and Hunter were making the wrong decision. Apple saying she sees something special in everyone is a step in the right direction. In Mirror Net Down, the students try to fix the Wi-Fi so they can take an online test that's due by sunset. This episode isn't too important to Apple's storyline, but but it does minimally introduce the idea that Apple is a very smart and logical person as she's the one who remembers the test, which this part of her character becomes more important later in the series. In Poppy the Roybull, twin daughters of Rapunzel, Holly and Poppy O'Hare start school at Ever After High. As Poppy does not have a prescribed destiny to follow, she goes around asking what classes she should take and whether she 
she should be a royal or a rebel. She first goes to Apple White, who explains that being a royal isn't easy as you have to make your kingdom happy. But the pros are you get to date princes and live in castles, but the con to her is you might have to eat a poison apple to get there. This tells us, the audience, that Apple still believes the only way for her to become queen of Ever After is if she gets poisoned by Raven. In Apple's princess practice, the audience follows Apple as she has what she calls a typical Apple day. She enacts a duck crosswalk, stops boys from fighting, and saves people down in a well. Despite this episode being all about her, it actually doesn't give that much lore to her other than her doing good deeds for practice to be a princess and future queen. Lastly in chapter 2 is the next Keystone special, Throne Coming. At Ever After High, they have a school holiday called Throne Coming that showcases the students at their best with a parade, sports game, and dance. Apple starts working on her Throne Coming float, and she puts a big apple tree on it, saying to Raven, It's the apple tree you poison me from, or might poison me from. This upsets Raven, but Apple tells her that she'll come around. Raven calls out Apple for her selfishness, and Apple turns it on Raven, saying that because she didn't sign the book, everyone's stories could be thrown into disarray and everyone could die. She leaves saying, if you ask me, you're the one being selfish. After Raven sees a fake image in the wishing well of her friends being hurt if she doesn't sign the storybook of legends, she runs to find Apple to tell her that she wants to sign the book. Apple runs to Milton Grimm to tell him Raven wants to sign, saying, the best thing ever after has happened. Later, Apple, Raven, Briar, and a couple of their friends go dress shopping, and Apple continues talking about how amazing it is that Raven's going to sign the book. Briar then calls out Apple for not seeing things from other people's perspectives and making it sound so easy to follow tradition. Apple tells Briar, well, we all have our part to play, and Briar calls out her privilege of how she has an easy destiny to follow compared to others. Unlike many characters, Apple gets a happy ending and doesn't have much to sacrifice. All she does is get poisoned for around a week, whereas Briar has to sleep for a hundred years, Duchess Swan dies a very tragic death as a swan, and Raven gets imprisoned and tortured forever. The next day at the throne coming parade, Apple and Raven are called to the podium so Raven can sign the storybook of legends, where Cedar exposes that the storybook of legends is a fake, so Raven doesn't sign the book. This also reveals that since the storybook of legends has been a fake this whole time, no one has officially signed the book, not even Apple. Raven and Apple go to find the real book, and Apple meets Giles for the first time. Afterwards, they all head to Heritage hall to find the book and they all jump into a portal. They all end up in each other's stories, with Apple ending up in Briar's story, Sleeping Beauty. Apple is also seen with Briar, who ended up in Raven's story, as Briar is told that she poisoned Apple. In Briar's story, Apple accidentally pricks her finger on the spindle, falling asleep. Briar goes into her book to save Apple, and she wakes up. After they all help break Giles's riddle curse, Apple offers to help Giles get ready for the throne coming dance as he hasn't been to a party in years. At the throne coming dance, Apple and Raven talk with Milton, and Milton slips up, which confirms to them that the image Raven saw in the wishing well was fake and Milton put it there. This is when true character development with Apple White starts to occur. She stands up to Milton for Raven, telling him what he did was wrong. She says, Raven needs to make up her own mind. She doesn't need to be tricked into doing what you think is right. Kevin, don't, Kevin, 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 watch the light, dude. The first episode of chapter 3 that is important to Apple's story is the Netflix special Spring Unsprung. In the story, the school is celebrating Spring Fairest, a festival to celebrate the beginning of spring. Alistair Wonderland, the son of Alice, and Bunny Blanc, daughter of the White Rabbit, travel from Wonderland to Ever After High to reveal that they found the real storybook of legends, but in reality, it's yet another fake that the Cheshire Cat had full of riddles. Apple hugs Alistair, thanking him for bringing the real book so everyone can sign. Milton exposes it for being a fake and Apple clutches onto the fake book. During the Spring Fairest cooking competition, Apple reads one of the riddles which ends up being the topsy-turvy spell, changing Apple's personality to cynical and more arrogant and mean. This spell also later affects Ashan, Hunter, Daring, Poppy, Humphrey Dumpty, and Cedar. The effect of the topsy-turvy spell is to invert one's personality. While Apple, in my opinion, is not the nicest person anyway, her main trait of her inverted personality is that she wants to hurt the world of Ever After intentionally. 
Apple sabotages Raven's dessert by putting a lot of spice in it, and she later threatens Raven and Holly. Apple then sneaks into Lizzie Hart's room and steals the map to the portal to Wonderland, the wishing well. She then reveals to Daring that she's going to plug up the well of wonder for good, removing the wonder and magic from ever after, and destroying the fairy tale world. They find the well, and Raven and her friends try to stop her. With the help of Ashlyn and Hunter, Apple clogs up the portal to Wonderland, and the world of ever after starts to turn into a gray world of nothingness. Raven and her friends catch up to Apple, and Apple tries to call hypocrisy by saying that Raven never wanted to follow her story in the first place. Raven tries to appeal to Apple's true nature of wanting to protect Ever After, with Holly, Briar, and Cerise joining in saying Apple literally has the least detrimental story in Ever After, so she has no reason to want to destroy Ever After, and how she's all about protecting the world. Before Raven can save the day, the world of Ever After fades to gray as the character's bodies slump into monotonous despair. The Wonderlandians are immune to the dryness of the well because they are from Wonderland and have wonder inside them, I assume. And Kitty stands up to her mom. They break the topsy-turvy curse and Apple asks, what have I done? They unplug the well as the world of Ever After is filled with magic and life again. Apple asks Alistair if he thinks the storybook of legends is still in Wonderland. However, in the end, they all decide that after all of that chaos, that today at the fair is a day to relax and have fun and not worry about the troubles in Wonderland they'll soon have to face. The next couple of episodes focus on a music festival in the forest that Ashlyn gets invited to. However, Apple says she can't go because a new theater is opening and she promised Daring they'd go on a date there. Later on, Apple wishes Raven good luck on her first date with Dexter. After the date, everyone at the school finds out that Ashlyn, C.A. Cupid, Blondie, and Poppy got lost in the dark forest trying to get to the music festival and they all try to find them. They find them and all have fun at the party. Before the next Keystone episode is The Legacy Orchard, which just sets up that Apple and Raven are now the yearbook committee at the school, which was entirely Apple's idea seen by Raven's facial expressions. Now we're on to the next special, Way to Wonderland. Apple starts this special in the first part, Card Tricks, by interrupting lunch to announce she's doing a special feature in the Griffin, the school's newspaper about Wonderland. A piece of lore, Apple's the editor of the school newspaper. Apple tries to explain her newspaper feature to Headmaster Grimm, and this is the first time Milton yells at Apple as he says that Wonderland and Ever After must stay separate. Apple asks for volunteers to help with her story in the study hall as she heads off to class. Apple forgives Raven's apology for ruining her announcement, and Apple quickly forgives her saying she just wants to learn about the curse Raven's mother put over Wonderland, poisoning its magic. They're in a science class together, and this is where Apple's logic starts to come into play. Apple is very logical, whereas Raven is good at improvising and creative things. Later in the day, Apple holds her planning meeting where only one person shows up, Darling Charming, the daughter of Prince Charming. Let's go, lesbians, let's go! They briefly talk about Wonderland before Lizzie comes in to help. Lizzie is upset that she can't go home on her mom's birthday because Wonderland and Ever After are separated. Raven and all her friends show up to help Apple, but later on the narrators reveal to Maddie that someone is trying to overthrow the Queen of Hearts in Wonderland. The friends try to find anything to help in the study room, and the evil queen, trapped in the mirror, drops down a book so Raven can find it. Apple uses an examination app to examine the photos in the book, which shows the curse the evil queen put on Wonderland. Everyone believes that if Raven says the curse in reverse, the curse will be lifted as they, including Apple, all pressure Raven. Apple says that she has to fix the curse as she's destined to be the evil queen, once again frustrating Raven, but she tries to reverse the curse. The attempt doesn't work as all of them are transported to Wonderland along with getting brand new look. Apple does have the best look in this special, argue with the wall. They all head off trying to find the Queen of Hearts birthday party, but they then realize that Raven couldn't lift the curse. Anyways, they continue heading towards Lizzie's mom. However, they get captured by Chase Redford and are forced to attend a day of school at Wonderland High School. This moves into the next episode, Jester's Wild, where the girls try to make it through one school day in Wonderland. Apple helps a lot with the logistical questions like in the math class and solving the debate in debate class. At lunch, Apple tells Courtly Jester, the student body president, about the plot against the Queen, but well, Courtley's the one plotting against the queen and is keeping the girls out of the school so they don't stop her plan. Afterward, Apple and Raven combine their logic and creativity to try to beat a game of chess against Chase and his mother, the Red Queen, on the chessboard. As Raven turns the chess game into a dance battle, they are then suddenly captured by Courtley Jester in a glass box of tea that's slowly filling up. To get out, they have to think outside the box. Haha, <laughs> and Apple is the last one to be able to escape, which speaks a lot to her logical and often closed-minded character. Also, I'm going to start an Apple White near-death experience count because it happens a lot more than you think. 
We already got one in Throne coming, and now we're at two here. Anyways, they get to Courtly Jester's office. Apple tries to ask for her help, but Courtly's the one trying to overthrow Lizzie's mom. This segues into episode three of the special, Shuffle the Deck. Raven tells Lizzie that it's her destiny to be the Queen of Hearts because she truly wants to be the Queen, which surprises Apple as to her. Raven's point was destiny equals bad, which I mentioned in my last Ever After High video was never the point. Raven wanted everybody to have the choice of adhering to destiny or choosing an entirely new one, which Apple, among many others, misconstrued into destiny equals bad, Raven hates tradition, when that is simply not the case. They all escape Wonderland High and continue their journey to the Queen's birthday party, starting the final episode of the special, A Royal Flush. The girls make it to the Queen's birthday party, and Kitty Cheshire finds the book in a massive pile of presents. As they make it to the presents room, Courtley's already found the book as Raven tries to use her magic to stop her. Raven's magic isn't strong enough, and the only way for her to receive full magic is if she signs the storybook of legends. Apple White gives her the book and says, it doesn't mean you have to become the evil queen. I know I've always wanted you to become your mom, but now I just don't think it's in you. Your heart is just too good. The decision is yours, Raven. It always has been. Character development! Raven signs the book and inherits her mother's magic, and Apple says, I know Raven. She is stronger than those dark powers. Just as the evil queen's magic is about to corrupt Raven and force her to kill Courtly, Apple stands in front of her saying, this isn't you. Choose who you want to be. Isn't that what you always tell me? Raven breaks out of the trance. She thanks her and Apple says, no, we should all be thanking you. After Raven removes the curse from Wonderland, they all have a party in Wonderland and Briar confesses to Apple and Raven that she dropped the storybook of legends down the well of wonder. Apple says that she thought everything regarding following death Destiny was so simple, but now that students have tried to steal Destiny's, she has realized that the storybook of legends does more harm than good. She still admits she wants her happily ever after, but no longer likes the whole book tradition of it all, saying, maybe it's time to shelf this book. Raven destroys the book, saying that everyone's destiny is now in their hearts and can be whatever they want it to be, including following tradition. Back to the episodic structure, the rest of chapter three focuses on Apple and Raven working on the yearbook, which further sets up the fact that Apple is a perfect who wants everything to look clean and perfect, and she butts heads with Raven, who wants the reality of things. Funny, interesting, and not perfect all the time. In the final episode of Chapter 3, Try Castle On, Apple and Raven decide to compromise on a mix of pretty and funny photos for the school's yearbook as they plant the seed in the Legacy Orchard as the school year ends. I really like Kimono Dragons. They could eat people? The first chapter of Episode 4 is arguably the most important special to Apple's character dragon games. Apple offers to distract all of the students who want Raven to use her magic to help them as Raven goes off to visit her mother on the one day of the year she can, visiting day. The goats openly say they want Raven to help them and not Apple, showing how Apple's popularity at school suddenly has declined, especially since the early chapters. It then cuts to a white expensive car driving very fast, which is the car of Apple's mother, Snow White. The narrators explain that Snow White is a royal executive who employs over 700 dwarves and she is basically the Jeff Bezos of the Ever After High world. She asks how Apple is doing in school, and she's shocked by the fact that Raven is more popular than Apple. Snow White immediately calls Apple, telling her that her popularity is down 13%. Add to the absurd list of things in Ever After High, fairy tale Mark Zuckerberg can measure and calculate popularity. Apple is quick to throw Raven under the bus, saying it's terrible that she's using her magic for good. I will say this is most likely an unhelpful defense mechanism Apple uses to talk with her mother. So at this point in the story, Apple does see Raven as a friend, but her whole situation is conflicted. Her mom tells her to remind the world of their fairy tale and suggests that she nudges Raven towards evil. Apple says she can't do that, and her mother says, remember, she's her mother's daughter, and so are you. So ask yourself, how badly do you want our happily ever after. Apple hangs up on her mom and Raven talks about how her visit with her mom went. After Apple tries to talk Raven into doing something evil, Raven catches on quickly realizing Apple's mom called her too. This is actually a really sweet moment between Apple and Raven and the one thing they have in common is extremely overbearing mothers living through their children. That night, Apple can't sleep so she goes to her mirror saying, mirror mirror on the wall, why is life so unfairest after all? Inside the mirror, the evil queen materializes an apple and tells 
tells Apple to follow it. Apple follows the flaming apple to the tower where the evil queen is, and after the evil queen reveals herself to her, Apple says, I can't talk to you. The evil queen tells her that she can give Apple her happily ever after and direct Raven more towards evil, but only if Apple lets her out of the mirror. Apple says, even if I trusted you, I can't let you out of the mirror, that would be wrong. The evil queen tries to appeal to her by comparing her to her mother, saying she did whatever it took to have her destiny. Apple then says, I am not afraid. I will do whatever it takes and I am like my mother and my destiny is mine. Apple frees the evil queen out of the mirror as she disguises herself as a high school student named Mira Shards. Moving on to the next day, students found the old Dragon Games arena and Apple learned that Snow White and the evil queen were very competitive when it came to dragon games. One of the dragons has babies and while Raven tries to incubate them, Mira overheats the spell. This makes half of the babies evil in which Apple is quick to accuse Raven of trying to make evil dragons. Snow White sees Blondie's mirror cast about the dragons and says she's got an idea that'll get Apple back on top and clear her pure as snow image. The school calls for a sudden assembly to welcome Snow White back to Ever After High and Apple is immediately suspicious of her plan. Snow White reinstates the dragon games at Ever After High along with building a new arena for them. She claims it as all Apple's idea to create more school spirit. Apple asks her why she's lying and her mother scolds her saying you have to do whatever it takes to get your fairy tale back on track. The evil queen reveals herself and Snow White grants her a temporary pardon to coach a dragon games team. After Raven and Darling leave upset with everyone involved, Snow White says to the evil queen, I'm sure your daughter will come around. So we know where Apple gets it from. You could say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. As Apple leaves the Dragon Games arena, her mom tells her to get in her car. In the car, Apple asks her why she pardoned the evil queen, in which Snow White reveals she has this device called the Booking Glass that can imprison the evil queen back in the mirror realm forever. That night, the evil queen visits Apple in her dorm room, and Apple tells her that her mom has the Booking Glass and is just looking for an excuse to use it. Apple then says that she feels she's done enough, but the evil queen threatens to expose that Apple broke her out in the first place. The next day, the evil queen chooses Apple to be the captain of her dragon dragon riding team. She then participates in the first dragon games in which Apple ends up hurting Darlene by blocking a goal. Apple flies over to the evil queen saying, I hope you know what you're doing. My friends are getting hurt. In which the evil queen says that she must get Raven to compete for Apple to get her happily ever after. Raven takes the field in Darling's place and it comes down to just her and Apple. Apple says, it's our destiny. You against me. Doesn't this feel right? Don't you want vengeance? Doesn't your heart desire victory over me? Aren't you angry? Raven calls her out once again for refusing to listen to her and ignoring what anyone wants except her, which makes Apple say, I just want our happily ever after. Raven gives her the ball, saying she's done playing games, and flies off the field. Apple then does your traditional saying something really hurtful as someone leaves you by saying, at least my mom will be proud of me. She scores the winning point of the game and tells the evil queen that their plan won't work and Raven will never be evil. After a huge fiasco with everyone thinking Raven burnt down the school and the evil queen becoming the de facto headmistress of the school for fixing the arena with her magic, Apple finds Raven in the dragon stables. Apple tells her that everyone's saying she burnt down the school on purpose and Raven explains how she's pretty sure her mom had something to do with it. Apple tries to reassure her that the evil queen has everything under control and tells Raven that she should give her mom another chance since she's all about changing her story, which then leads to her accidentally confessing to breaking her mom out of the mirror prison. Raven understandably gets upset about this and Apple tells her she promised to make her happy ending come true and that she believes the evil queen has changed and can benefit all of Ever After High. Raven calls her out on her bad behavior and leaves her in the stables alone. Apple tries to call her mom, but Snow White has already been kidnapped by the evil queen. After the evil queen has completely taken over the school and turned it into an authoritarian hellhole, Apple is seen crying on her bed. The evil queen comes in asking if she's crying about raven running away and apple stands up to the evil queen saying if she knew where raven was she'd tell her she was right about her mother and beg for forgiveness she admits that this is her fault and the evil queen offers her a poison apple then pushes her out of the window oh that's another add to the new death count Apple finds her dragon and flies to the enchanted forest to apologize to Raven and help her stop the evil queen. She finds Raven and apologizes for her selfishness and promises to be good and stop her mom. They make up, but all of a sudden Fable Thorn, who's been stalking Apple, plants the poison apple with fruits in the enchanted forest. Apple White unknowingly bites the apple, sending her into a deadly sleep.
The next morning, they make a bed of flowers for Apple as they hold a somewhat funeral for her, giving her white roses and everything. Daring, as Apple's assumed Prince Charming, tries to kiss her to break her slumber, but it doesn't work. Daring isn't her Prince Charming. They then host an official funeral for Apple, ending with Raven running off to stop her mother. Daring is wallowing over the fact that he isn't Apple's Prince Charming, but then his sister Darling runs over, kisses Apple, and she wakes up. Lesbian rights, hello, a lesbian. Darling is Apple's true love. <laughs> After learning that Raven left, Apple confesses to everyone that she set the evil queen free in the first place, and she rallies everyone together to save Raven and stop the evil queen. As everyone mounts on their dragons, they fly back to Ever After High to lock the evil queen in the booking glass. But at the last minute, the evil queen steals the booking glass from Apple. Using her magic, Raven and her dragon give the booking glass back to Apple. Apple stands up again to the evil queen saying that she does have a choice and that she'll find her happily ever after another way. With the help of Raven's magic, Apple successfully captures the evil queen back in the booking glass, fixing all of the harm the evil queen caused to everyone and the school. Snow White sees her daughter again and they embrace for a hug as the special ends with Apple and Raven playing dragon games together happily. The last important episode so to Apple's story is the final special of Ever After High, Epic Winter. It is revealed in the special by the narrators that when Apple broke the Evil Queen out of the mirror in Dragon Games, the broken glass mixed with the Evil Queen's magic created an evil magical dust, which was then stolen by the shape-shifting servants of the King of the Snow Kingdom, Jackie Frost and Northwind. Jackie and Northwind then use this dust to curse the Snow King and Queen into behaving strangely. Back at Ever After High, things are awkward between Apple and Daring after Dragon Games as Daring isn't Apple's Prince Charming. Hey, you haven't returned anymore. You are gay! Later on, Baba Yaga later explains that the shards of the Evil Queen's mirror being thrown in someone's eye, like Jackie Frost and Northwind did to the Snow King, causes the inflicted to only see bad in the world, including making up delusions. Later on, Apple apologizes to Daring for how she behaved. Also, by the way, Daring is a furry in this scene. They discuss how they're not destined soulmates anymore as Daring couldn't save Apple and Apple is not able to save Daring from his beast curse. And as much as this is an anticlimactic ending, this marks the end of Apple White's story in the Ever After High cartoon web series. What up? I'm Jared, I'm 19, and I never fucking learned how to read. In my Raven Queen video, I did not address the Ever After High books as I was and still for the most part am unfamiliar with them. First off, I would like to apologize for not referencing the books in my previous Ever After High videos. And second, thank you to my subscribers for telling me about them and how they add a lot to the story of Ever After High, especially regarding Apple's character. In the first book, The Storybook of Legends, chapter two is all about Apple White. Titled Simply Unquestionably Perfect, Apple explains a lot about herself, which gives a lot more lore and insight into her character. I'll be brief with what we learned. When Apple was six, she fell into a well and almost drowned which pushed her to protect the safety of herself and her destiny. Some of the staff think that the only reason for her popularity is her beauty, which can add to Apple's motivation to prove that she can be a good queen and deserves nobility status rather than just doing it because of her story and privilege. Throughout the storybook of legends, Apple and Raven go on various adventures that happen during the events of chapter one of the web series that weren't included in the web series. Minimal pieces of lore stated in the first book include that Apple got her Legacy Day clothes from Woodland Creatures, and Apple is comforted after Legacy Day by the rest of the royals, except Briar, who just dances? The second book, The Unfairest of Them All, only has one piece of important lore towards Apple's story, which is that Apple called her mother after Legacy Day to explain what Raven did, in which Snow White is still optimistic that her story will stay on track. And Snow tells her to just smile, which frustrates Apple. And that's basically all of the lore we learn about Apple in the various book series of Ever After High. Dear Diary, today I couldn't find my diary, so I'm writing this on both of my Kung Fu Panda 2 DVD. Another piece of important Ever After High media that I ignored in my previous video about Ever After High is the diaries that came with the dolls. Once again, I apologize for not discussing these in my previous video, and now let's get into Apple's diary entries. A lot of Apple's diaries are just rehashes of things that happened in chapter one of the show, but new lore starts being added at chapter five, where Apple recounts how Baba Yaga put her in detention for skipping class. She writes, who did Baba Yaga think she was? What a royal pain she is. I mean, I'm not one of her students. I'm not studying to be an evil queen with black magic. Why did she have it out for me anyway? The truth is, the truth is, the truth is I was mad at myself. My parents invested so much in me, and here I was in detention, waiting to see Headmaster Grimm. 
Some example I set. If I'm supposed to be the future queen, I need to act like it. Otherwise, they might close the book on me. See, if you rebel against the system, your story is locked forever and you vanish from memory. So you see, being the next Snow White is not just about being beautiful and popular. If I'm lucky enough to get out of this mess, I'm going to be the best, fairest one of all the school has ever seen. The diaries are also how we learn how Apple made Raven her roommate without her consent. After ditching class, Apple is sent to Milton's office as he expresses how disappointed he is in her. As punishment, he removes her from the Royal Student Council, which really upsets Raven as her parents would be incredibly disappointed in her. She tells Milton that she'll do anything to stay in Student Council, to which he asks her if she has any ideas to encourage Raven to follow her destiny. She writes, This was a shock. Raven was a sweet girl, but I never imagined her not wanting to be the next evil queen. If I was reading Headmaster Grimm right, he's afraid she wouldn't pledge her destiny. And if she didn't, she was in danger of vanishing from memory. Not only was she endangering herself, but she also put the destiny of me, Daring, and so many others in danger. I knew what I had to do. Sir, I formally request a transfer to room with Raven Queen. Smiling, Headmaster Grimm said I was still head of the Royal Student Council. I had a new quest, save Raven Queen. Some people may have thought it odd for a princess to be friends with an evil sorceress, but if I could help Raven see the light, it would all be worth it. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> As always with this series, we have to find the protagonist, antagonist, given circumstances, and the climax. If you recall from my last Ever After High video, I explained that Raven is the protagonist and Apple White is the primary antagonist of Ever After High in the theatrical lens. This still holds up in this video as in the story, we follow Raven's goals and motivations and Apple is the primary person trying to stop Raven from achieving those goals in the events of the story. However, because Apple White is such a polarizing character, I thought I would explain that just because she's the antagonist doesn't automatically equal that she's a villain. Despite this, Apple is arguably not a great person and her views on destiny are proven wrong time and time again which adds to her being the antagonist. Apple White is also such a hard character to explain as her story is for the most part unfinished as Ever After High never got a full resolution, which can make Apple's characters frustrating for some. She never got a fully realized redemption arc like other characters like Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender or even a character I've discussed before, N from Pokemon Black and White. But I genuinely believe she was going to get one if the franchise wasn't discontinued. As far as given circumstances, some of the given circumstances of Ever After High that are connected to Apple are that she is the daughter of Snow White, her prescribed destiny is to become the queen of Ever After after getting poisoned, and her best friends are Briar Beauty and Ash and Ella. These circumstances give the audience insight into Apple as a character and why she makes certain decisions throughout the story. Next is the climax. As Ever After High ended unfinished as a story, the story doesn't have a fully realized official climax. However, the climax of Ever After High as it is, is Apple helping Raven defeat the Evil Queen in the final episode of the Dragon Game special, as Raven's major dramatic question of, will Raven choose her own destiny, is answered in that moment. However, because Apple is not the protagonist of Ever After High, it is not major dramatic question time. So now it's time for the little segment for non-protagonist, Goals and Roles. Look at this graph! As the main antagonist in Raven's story in Ever After High, Apple's role in the story is to cause conflict for Raven and prevent her from choosing her own destiny. This is very evident in everything that she says to Raven throughout the show and the actions she does. Apple consistently gives backhanded compliments to Raven and the other rebels, projects her insecurities about being selfish onto her, and causes a lot of conflicts which prevent Raven from being taken seriously by the school and letting her choose her own destiny. She also has the purpose of making the royal versus rebel conflict prominent to the point where to viewers, it's almost like a stalemate. However, as the story progresses, holes start to peek through the royal argument. Is the royal versus rebel a cut and dry issue? Yes and no. It is because having the choice to either adhere to tradition or blaze a new trail is arguably the correct choice looking at the events of the show and what will make all of the characters happy, but it is not because it isn't a case of you can either subscribe to tradition or get a whole new destiny, which many people confuse the story for. Also, both Raven and Apple in a way are selfish and selfless in their goals, but it all depends on what is their number one priority. Making sure you are fit to roll over subjects or proving that you and other people who are hated on for no reason are good people. Raven isn't the first person to question her destiny. She's just the first one to take action to reject tradition, which caused Apple and the Royals to go against her specifically. All of this evidence adds to Apple's role in Ever After High to be the primary antagonist to Raven's story, and her job as a character is to prevent Raven from answering her major dramatic question with a guaranteed yes. Happy birthday, Raven! 
my Raven Queen video, I discussed the very popular theory made by underscore fairytale underscore vibes underscore on YouTube, who by the way found my video, that Apple and Raven were switched at birth. Go over the evidence I discussed in my Raven Queen video, Raven and Snow White have black hair whereas Apple and the Evil Queen have blonde hair based on flashbacks and when Raven is in the Snow White story in Throne Coming. Apple is also the first Snow White descendant to have blonde hair. Since posting my last video about Ever After High, I've looked into the theory more and also Ainsley has made new videos about the theory, one of which she mentions me in. First off, there's one president of Snow White being a blonde, which is in the story Snow White and Rose Red. However, this story isn't referenced as much as the Brothers Grimm Snow White that directly says that Snow White has hair as black as ebony. In the book The Storybook of Legends by Shannon Hale, it specifies that the Ever After High universe is following the Brothers Grimm story as Apple's maids complain that Apple has blonde hair and that the fairy tale specifies that she must have hair as black as ebony. Apple's blonde hair is mentioned throughout the book with Baba Yaga calling her extremely disappointing for a Snow White descendant on page 115, and her image in the mirror as she signs the storybook of legend still having blonde hair on page 261. There is also more evidence of the evil queen having naturally platinum blonde hair in the book The Class of Classics. Another piece of evidence is while Apple is fixated on her whole destiny of becoming the next Snow White, she is especially fixated on the part where she gets poisoned. This is especially apparent in her throne coming float, which is supposed to celebrate the character's destinies. So you'd think Apple would have her happy ending or her on a throne, right? Ainsley from underscore fairytale underscore vibes underscore has argued that this float idea would have suited the evil queen more than Snow White as the evil queen is the one who, you know, does the poisoning. Not to mention the fact that she's literally named after the thing that poisons Snow White in the story, which in the books, Snow White says that she named her apple as the poison apple is what made her rich and famous, which is so fucked up. Along with this, Apple's fixation with becoming the next Snow White, funnily enough, fits more with the motive of the evil queen. The evil queen wants to be the fairest of them all, which Apple constantly says throughout the series. Not only that, Apple exhibits behaviors of the evil queen like talking to a magic mirror. Additionally, later on in the aforementioned scene in Throat Coming, Apple gives Raven one of the apples from the float, which could have been foreshadowing towards Apple being destined to be the next evil queen. While this theory was never confirmed, Apple and Raven being switched at birth could have added a lot to both their stories in general and in the theatrical lens. And they were roommates. God, they were roommates. While we've analyzed Apple's character, let's look at some other theatrical elements in her character. Starting off, in my last video, I discussed how in the story of Ever After High, Apple and Raven are foils for each other. Apple's personality traits emphasize certain traits in Raven and vice versa. Specifically, Apple's selfishness contrasts with Raven's selflessness. Apple holds on to her destiny tightly, which we later learn is to impress her mother and be perfect in the eyes of Snow White and society, just like how society views her mother as the queen of Ever After. This all explains why Apple explodes when people, especially Raven, Raven resists traditions as she's been told all her life that tradition is the only way to be successful and live a happy life so she gets jealous that people are just able to take action and resist the rules of the school and presumably the government of Ever After. She is also shown to be a lot less mature than Raven and a lot of the other characters as she throws tantrums when things don't go her way and has a tendency to villainize others to escape accountability. This is especially apparent with how she treats Raven in The Tale of Legacy Day and how she treats Ashlyn in True Heart. Day. Apple still sucks up to authority like Milton and her mother. She struggles with understanding boundaries and projects her insecurities onto others. On the other hand, Raven handles setting boundaries with Apple very well and is able to stand up for herself, even to people with authority. Apple's lack of maturity highlights Raven's maturity, as they are true foils for each other. Now, despite all of this, Apple's trauma and issues with her mother don't excuse all of the pain and trauma she gave to Raven and many others throughout the series and all the bad things she's done. Apple Apple is not exempt from criticism just because of everything she's been through. The same goes for literally every character I've covered in this series. Your coping mechanisms, ideologies, beliefs, and past experiences can be used to explain why bad behavior occurs, but it can never ever excuse the hurt you cause to another individual. Apple is an individual with selfish tendencies who has hurt many of her friends, and I think if the story of Ever After High continued, she could have been held accountable for everything she's done and later on had plenty of character development. 
Lastly, let's discuss Apple White's design and the color psychology behind it. Apple's main design is an ornate red dress with white and gold poofy sleeves and white and gold filigree on the skirt. She has long blonde hair, very pale skin, and bright blue eyes. I've already discussed how her blonde hair adds to the switched at birth theory, but there are a couple more interpretations of why Apple has blonde hair. First off, blonde hair and blue eyes is the most commonly known image of privilege. As Apple is a very privileged character having arguably the happiest destiny in ever after high, so her having blonde hair and blue eyes makes sense. On the other hand, her blonde hair is seen as a flaw in the Snow White story, so her blonde hair could represent how she's a flawed character and how she strives for perfection, especially regarding her prescribed destiny as the next Snow White. Moving on to her outfit, her outfit is meant to be reminiscent of princess dresses and provides a more elegant contrast to Raven's edgier look. It is also stated in her Getting Ferris doll that Apple needs to wear glasses, but she doesn't wear them. It is heavily implied that she doesn't wear them because of the harmful idea that glasses aren't beautiful, and her pressure of being perfect goes to the point of her risking her vision and well-being. She wears red as it's the color of the royals, but you may be wondering, Snow White also wears blue and yellow, so why doesn't Apple? I think that's because the colors in Apple's design represent her character better than blue and yellow could. In color psychology, red is known to attract the most attention, as it represents dominance, passion, and power. Apple wants to be the queen of ever after, and is the most popular girl in school, so her red outfit makes a strong statement. Red is also a very violent and aggressive color which suits Apple's outburst. White is also often associated with purity and perfectionism. However, when paired with warm colors like red and gold, white can look garish and obnoxiously showy. This oddly fits Apple's character very well as she wants everyone to see her as perfect and as the future queen of ever after, but she's frequently selfish, mean to the rebels, and is not perfect. Finally, gold represents someone who respects authority and follows rules, loyalty, and having a strong sense of right and wrong, a need to feel useful, and valuing home, family, and traditions. All of that matches Apple's personality scarily to a T. All in all, the design choices and theatrical elements in Apple's character add a lot to her personality and to the theatrical lens. In conclusion, Apple White from Ever After High has a lot of theatrical elements in her character. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below what characters you would like to see in the series next, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much!